Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Fearless Fridays on Facebook Live. Um, thank you to those of us who are joining us or who will be joining us and joining us uh, in later in the broadcast. Um, my apologies that it has been a few weeks since we have had a, a Fearless Fridays on Facebook Live. As many of you know, we had our uh, first annual STEMathon event this past Saturday um, and had an awesome and amazing successful event. So thank you to all of those who attended and have volunteer and all of our sponsors. Um, we honestly could not have done it without you. Um, but obviously when you're planning a large event like that, it is hard to uh, find the time to do things like Fearless Fridays. Um, we actually had about 240 participants throughout the day, um, so that was awesome. Um, but this is Robert. Robert is one of our uh, STEM coaches and he has um, been with STEM Minds basically since the beginning actually. Um, I think you've actually technically been here longer than I have, um, and I've been here a while, so. <laughs> I think, I think that's under the amount of time, but very close. Very, yeah, like basically the first summer that STEM Minds um, was around, and the first summer camp um, is when kind of Robert and I joined in, so we've seen quite a progression throughout the years, um, but before we get started about kind of Robert's journey with STEM Minds and how it has helped him um, to land a scholarship at Dalhousie, um, we wanted to share with you something that uh, Studio 5, which is just two doors down from us, um, shared with us earlier today. Uh, so for those of you who um, kind of saw or were here at the STEMathon, we had a parent lounge set up with them. Um, they were doing workshops and um, dance workshops and things like that, and the kids would kind of go over as the parents were waiting to um, pick them up after their challenge. And so a couple of our kids had actually gone over and done some art workshops and created these really amazing robots. Um, and the lovely ladies over at Studio 5 actually painted them onto a canvas and uh, framed them for us. So I'm going to scooch back and show you all this amazing canvas that they made with Stemmas and Studio 5. Aren't these cute? So these were some of our kids who actually created these. Um, and so it's just amazing because it's a really good um, indication, again, of how arts and STEM can kind of go together. Um, and Robert and I are both very interested in kind of artistic elements and things like that. And so we love things like that where you can kind of see how they intersect and interconnect and uh, nothing is ever isolated anymore. Um, so without further ado, thank you, Robert, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Um, and yeah, so we're just going to talk a little bit about your journey with STEM Minds and STEM. And as a student who has studied STEM and is involved in this kind of um, industry, not only as a student, but also as um, an instructor for those younger than you, um, what your experience has been like and how kind of looking, going through this journey has helped you kind of end up where you want to in terms of higher education. Um, so yeah, so maybe give us a little bit of the background of what you do here at STEM Minds. Yeah, so here at STEM Minds, I am a uh, instructor most of the time, but also I have been managing the, or managing, creating content for the uh, video side, sort of video marketing for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I basically built the video format with like music and introduction, um, and then I uh, found a way to incorporate all the elements of our video into a very easily progressing uh, format that stays consistent throughout all of our videos and is just sort of modified a little bit as we go on and make new content for summer camps and our March break, ca March break camps and uh, new experimental YouTube and also education. So that, yeah. that is mainly my role in a nutshell. Yeah, so basically all of those um, videos that you've seen, if any of you check out our YouTube channel, um, all of those videos are um, kind of edited and uh, produced by Robert. Um, so he's the one who kind of came up with the little um, logo screen that comes up. And the theme that often plays in our YouTube videos is actually created by um, Robert as well. Um, so personal shout out to you, Robert, as the creative director. Um, Robert is has been a huge help to me um, over, you know, the past, I guess, technically two years um, with helping me with 
uh, media content, photography, video. So yeah, I couldn't have done a lot of this stuff without you. <laughs> <laughs> so as part of um, Robert's application, to Dalhousie University. Um, he actually wrote a little bit of an essay about STEM minds and about STEM education and kind of what kind of impact that has had um, on him. So I'm going to kind of pass it off to you and share what you wrote about um, with the internet and the lovely people on it. Um, and yeah, kind of share your experiences with STEM minds. Of course. So um, I. In the article, I essentially started off by uh, introducing STEM Minds as a company that has uh, brought on a lot of fresh new faces in the teaching world, mm -hmm. and uh, all of whom want to make uh, the impact of starting their career uh, in making a positive difference in not only by helping out in education, but also reshaping the way that we currently see education and sort of... Uh, realizing that education has a value in our community and that teachers have a value in our community not only as people that do their job and come to work every day but also as community members who are active in mentoring the children of tomorrow and uh, essentially mentoring forward our uh, latest wave of uh, bright thinkers. So mm -hmm. uh, I admire about, the thing that I admire about STEM Minds most is that, and especially one of the lessons that it's taught me, is that I can apply its most forward-thinking teaching about education wherever I, uh, whatever educational institution I visit or go to, um, and that would be that education is less about just knowing how to do or practice what you preach and more about being patient and being thoughtful with your students and also having an open mind and flexible attitude whenever you enter the classroom because your students don't want to just cram information of their heads. They want to be inspired to learn because being actively thinking and learning in our community is how you forward it's essentially how you move forward into the future as opposed to just continue, just continuing to accept the problems that we have and um, living with them. So making a positive difference in education and speaking about education is also contributing to how we speak about thinking and how we speak about how to learn how to teach, which is actually amazing because you need to be taught and learn how to teach so others can learn. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, you need to understand that learning is not just conveying information. Learning is being patient and also um, being flexible and uh, inspiring in the sense that you need to teach people how to learn. Yeah, and I, you know, as a teacher myself, um, when I kind of read Robert's um, essay, it really kind of resonated with me, and I, I thank you for saying such kind words about us. Um, but I think that you know, you kind of hit the nail on the head that as teachers you are like we're learners ourselves right and especially the way that um you know kids are nowadays is kids today are different than um you know we were when we were kids and our parents were when they were kids and our grandparents were when they were kids and just the way that kids are learning now is a lot more um you know experiential and they need that kind of tangible and experiential um you know, activities to be able to actually grasp the information. Because as you rightly said, um, teaching, especially with things like, you know, STEM education, you can't just read it in a book or you can't just have someone lecture you about it. You have to actually figure it out in a way that makes sense for you, for you to actually learn that and actually experience that. Um, so it was kind of nice to hear from Robert's perspective that, you know, the types of things that we do here seem, seem to be working, <laughs> which is good because that's, that's, uh, that's what we want. Um, so yeah, so you also had mentioned um, kind of part of your own 
fearless learning journey um, into some of the video and technology and kind of stuff like that that you know you've always been interested in but maybe never really had the platform for and I think that's something that um, resonates with a lot of the teachers here but also the students that you know the great thing about STEM Minds is it's given so many of us you know teacher and student alike that platform to be able to really explore and really engage with things that you've already been really interested in, but just maybe not would have known where to start otherwise. Um, so can you share some of your um, kind of involvements and some of your experience with doing the media and kind of what that learning was like? For Absolutely. You? So in terms of the uh, learning journey, um, I, first of all, starting out with the media, I didn't, as uh, Sam was saying, I didn't really have a platform that I was given. And part of that is learning to accept that you are going to learn along the way. And especially something that I've learned from STEM minds, but also from learning in general, because uh, I'm in grade 12 now and I'm going to university, I've had to do a lot of learning over this semester, um, <laughs> both inside and outside of school. Yeah. So I've learned that learning really happens when you do it the first time and look back on it and regret things. Because what that actually means is that you made mistakes and the fact that you regret things means that the learning system works. When you go back or when you do it the first time and you don't find anything you can improve on, that means that you haven't learned anything. But when you go back and revisit your experiences and you find that there is something left to learn, it doesn't mean that you've done poorly. It means that you've done excellently. It means that you've... Uh, You've proven to yourself that you have learned. And that's one of the most encouraging things. How that relates back to my experience with media is it effectively, um, the journey for me was all about realizing that my current system had flaws. My current system had, uh, like maybe the intro wasn't long enough or the intro had outdated footage or there were uh, discrepancies with the subtitles that are making them unreadable or uh, uh, there was something about the end card that needed a, a greater appeal to the audience. So all of these little things are regrets that I have about the first video, but those regrets are what make the first video being worth made. I don't, I don't regret making the first video. Mm -hmm. I regret certain aspects and that's what makes me proud of the first video. Yep. So in a very, um, different way of thinking we have to aim to have uh, we need to aim to make mistakes or we need to aim to have the biggest plans possible and then realize at the end of the day that making mistakes was part of our journey all along and how that relates back to work and how that relates back to stem minds and how it teaches you to cope with the world is that the best of all practices that you're going to do in your entire life is a practice you can build and keep building and keep loving. Because when you can build your own practice and realize that you need to improve it and keep building upon it, it's yours. <laughs> so when you figure out that a system's not working, when you tried your hardest and realized that your hardest wasn't good enough to satisfy some of your regrets at the end of the day, that means that you're learning, that means that you're building your system, and that means that that system is going to work for you forever. Mm -hmm. And it's yours. Very. And that's part of my journey with STEM. Yeah, very well said. Um, I mean, you know, mistakes equal learning is probably our biggest mantra here at STEM Minds. And it's something that, you know, this where that whole idea of fearless learning was kind of, you know, born through is that most of us have gone through, pretty much all of us have gone through that experience here. You know, we all embody fearless learning in that way. Um, and as you rightly said, Robert, it's by going through that journey and by, you know, just kind of jumping in and trying it and looking back on it and reflecting on it and being like, oh, you know, if I was to go back and try this again, maybe my intro would have been different or maybe this would have been different, things like that. It's in going through those experiences that you're able to really truly learn 
Um, and really, truly, as you said, kind of develop that system, right? So that you know for the future, it doesn't matter what mistake you encounter or what kind of challenge you encounter, you have your system that works for you of like, okay, how do I pick up and move on from that? Or kind of how do I, you know, use that experience to better improve myself going forward instead of, um, I always give the example to the kids of, you know, when we make a mistake, I'm not going to throw myself on the ground and like dramatically cry and sob like a Disney princess would, I'm going to think about, okay, what can I do next time to either ensure this doesn't happen again, or if I face a similar challenge, how am I going to handle it um, in the future? And as you said, I think that's really where, um, you know, the true value of STEM learning and the true value of this idea of being fearless comes from is that it's applicable no matter what you do. So it doesn't have to necessarily be specific to media or marketing or whatever you might do. Um, just going through that experience of being fearless and of giving it a try, you can apply it to any sort of aspect of your life. Um, so yeah, so Robert, uh, thank you so much for joining us today and so um, you know sharing your experiences. Um, I know I'm not your teacher, but as a, a teacher and someone who you know has worked closely with you over the past few years, um, I can say that all of us as STEM minds are extremely proud of you, um, extremely proud of all the work that you've done, um, and extremely proud of you for getting that scholarship to Dalhousie. Um, I'm really honored that you chose to speak about STEM minds and the type of work that we do um, as part of your application. So. Robert is still with us for the next few months, which is which is great, and hopefully in the future too, if you ever come home um, at Absolutely. university. Um, but we will definitely miss you in the fall, and we will carry some. Um, you'll probably you know kill me for saying this, but carry some some wabo with us um, for forever. So, for those of you who don't know, wabo is. Uh, the endearing nickname that all of the staff has now given to Robert. So thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, and so um, as always, those of you who have questions or maybe you went through a similar experience or know someone who's gone through a similar experience, you can always, well, always write it down in the comments below. Um, and uh, if any of you have kids who are, you know, entering, uh, in, they're in high school and they're thinking about entering in university and they're, you know, very curious about Robert's journey um, by all means send us a message uh, leave it in the comments below and we'll pass it off and uh, share what we can um, anything else you want to add before we say goodbye to a little few people um, no I think I've said everything okay <laughs> excellent last advice we can give you is just keep learning and don't forget to be fearless so thank you all for joining us, and we will see you again tomorrow, um, actually, where we have our science rendezvous event. Um, so I will be doing some live coverage throughout the day, um, just kind of showing off the really cool things that we have going on. Science rendezvous is a national event, so there will be uh, things happening kind of all across the country, but this is the first one that's going to be happening in Aurora, so we are very excited about that. Um, totally free event from 10 to 5, so those of you who are watching who have kids and are looking to um, do have some family fun this weekend come on down and um, other than that you will see me again tomorrow thank you for joining us everybody and thank you again Robert for coming on this afternoon absolutely all right bye for now bye for now